This one's for you. When the night has come And the land is gone And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid No, I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand Stand by me Stand by me If the sky that we look upon Should tumble and fall And the mountains to crumble to the sea
You'll think I'm mad. I'm the only sane one here. I am. It's amazing how many people are scared of psychiatrists. scared of insanity. They think insanity is something that can just, like a disease, you know, you can catch it or something. It's ridiculous to be scared of something like that. It's, um, it's like a, you know, so I say when your your belief system is is important, and it's important that your belief system is correct. So if you've got fucked up beliefs that you just haven't really wanted to consider or analyze or think, you know, why am I believing that someone could just catch insanity, you know, or, you know, worry about it even ever since Saint Francis got to this high state of being got with God and the people in charge noticed you know how loving he was and how that other people wanted you know it was infectious because he was so loving going that loving state other people wanted to follow him wanted to get to where he was too you know it's like you see someone really happy you think what the fuck are they on i want some of that right that's what <laughs> happened then and they saw this and we thought right we don't you know if all it takes for someone to get with god is to have a few hardships think about it for a while get through it and then they're in this euphoric place, you know, oh, we can't have this because this is going to undermine our control with the Catholic Church. Because this went all the way to the Pope, and you can see it in a film, uh, Brother, Sister, S Brother, Son, Sister Moon is the name of the film. And there's two films depicting St. Francis's life, and the other one's shit. And this one is awesome, Brother, Son, Sister Moon. And, you know, they cottoned on to this, and at the end of the film even hints towards that, because they're all like, because the Pope sort of honoured St. Francis, and people around like saying, what the fuck are you doing honouring this graggy bloke, whatever, but who talked about God and who you know, had a go at the people wearing fancy clothes and all that sort of stuff. But the Pope sort of kissed his feet <clears throat> at the time. They're like, confused, like, why is the Pope being friendly to this guy? And then, and then at the end it says, <clears throat> the Pope's not stupid. He knows this will bring the poor people back to the church if they're like along with St. Francis. So it was a pretense. But they didn't want any future St. Francis's, right? They didn't want this to happen again. They wanted it to be a one-off. So they established this mental asylum. Because when someone's feeling God, it's so strong, they want to just take all their clothes off and just walk barefoot on the ground. You know, that happened. If that happens, you know, woohoo, off to the insanity suite, um, drugged up, made to feel mental. This has sort of created a sort of a stigma in society that you can go mental. And that, oh, if I do something out of the ordinary, I am going mental. It's all a, a bullshit. And it was a, a fear I had at the age of 19.
which I think prevented me from accepting what I was feeling at that time. And this time around when I was getting, if you like, near to that feeling, I just sort of, because I, I'd heard saying that fear is born of an untruth. Not all fears, but fear, a fear can be born of an untruth. You know, an untruth in your soul. And this truth was all about this perception of insanity. Now, next week I start a job supporting people who are supposedly have brain injuries. So I'll start to get some first-hand experience of these people with brain injuries. Now I am aware that they are medicated. Basically daily they will take medicines and my suspicions are that these medicines curb their emotions and for these people they they've got emotions on a boiling point and they're prevented from feeling them <clears throat> and in a sense if they were able to feel their emotions and they just go through it you know even if you know, their emotions for them are very strong and but if some of these are, uh, are heightened by untruths in their belief system as well you know, maybe that's got something to do with it um, so, well, like I say, I'll start to get some first-hand experience of, 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 of people who have supposed brain injuries <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm sane. You know, at the point where someone's behaviour becomes unsafe to others around them, And themselves, but you know, shouldn't we almost have the freedom to do what we like to ourselves? <clears throat> you know, I've known people who have cut themselves parts in times of their life. A girlfriend of mine, she used to harm herself, and it was quite scary when she showed me her stomach and there was all these cuts in it. I felt really bad for her, but then I smoke facts which I know aren't good for me and killing me. Um, and people overeat and, you know. But, so when it gets to the point of someone's hurting somebody else, violent like that, I think it's right to restrain them. Or, you know, take them out of society. And I think that's, that, that has to be done in, in fairness to everybody else. But anyway, we'll see. Taylor 
She saw my new blue jeans My father was a gambling man Down in New By the way, I am aware of the mistakes I am making. And I have drunk alcohol tonight. Two pints. And I've smoked cannabis. I only had three days off. Not, not very good. But it was the weekend, and it was Friday night, and... I didn't realise that I wasn't having my son this weekend. He's on a rugby tournament with his mother, mother and co. So I was like, oh, I've got all weekend, got to go out of cannabis. And my brother was down. And fortunately, some sort of happened to come my way. I've noticed I think about God more when I'm not on the cannabis. And that's good. The power of thought. What do you think about most of the time? Money, job, what you what other people in your life are up to. I don't know what this video is about. It's just not about anything. So nobody watch it. So I don't know what I'm doing. <clears throat> um. Grew up in Bodica. I loved it. I loved my childhood. I was going out with my mate from the age of seven, really, and um, going out around Bodica. Awesome. We climb walls, like really high ones. Climb trees. Hide in bushes, or not hide in bushes. We made bushes our sort of places where we could live. We had a toilet, we had a place where you could fly it because it flew, of course. There were awesome times, and um, all my memories from Bodica really good, and all the people. All the brothers and sisters I knew in body were well, cool. My guitar hasn't been tuned for a long time. I'm glad I decided at the age of 17 to learn guitar. I've been singing since I was... I, used to, I think I used to first sing, like, try and sing. I wasn't very good. But I used to sing, I used to just like it. I like singing in the morning. You know, sometimes I notice when I think, shit, I haven't, like, 
just sung on the toilet for a couple of weeks or something. And in fact, I haven't picked up the guitar really for more than a couple of weeks. Like creative stuff, you can't force it. You just gotta let it, let it happen in a way. But it's thoughts, see? Thinking, I want to play a musical instrument. Or, you know, I want to sing in front of people. I'd like to share my singing or whatever. What you think about is... Is because everything starts with a thought. So the thought is, and what sparks a thought? A feeling sparks a thought.
philosophize. And I used to worry myself out of existence. Because it just didn't make any sense. But now it makes sense. Because I can think outside of the universe. But anyway, I came up with this song. We are. Here. So we must exist. Thank <laughs> you.